Welcome to Unreal Tips and Tricks. In this week's episode, we'll be looking at how best to use the color grading tools. We'll start with a brief look at some important points to consider. Then we'll jump right into the workflow. Before you get started, it's a good idea to ensure you're working in the best environment for color grading. Your workstation should be in a lighting situation that isn't too bright, and it's best to work on a monitor that has full support for the sRGB color gamut. Standard RGB is the most commonly used color space on digital displays, originally designed for use with CRTs, and it's the color space you'll be working with in Unreal. You can also use a monitor that's calibrated for the Rec. 709 color space, as Rec. 709 and sRGB are virtually identical. When purchasing a monitor, it should have a percentage indication of the sRGB color gamut that it supports. Values over 95% and even up to 100% are not uncommon. A monitor with a high contrast ratio of 2000 to 1 or better, as well as a good peak luminance and low black levels is also recommended. Most workstation monitors come pre-calibrated, but depending on your lighting conditions and over time, you may need to recalibrate. For that, I recommend something like the X-Rite i1 Display Pro. Unreal can output to both low dynamic and HDR displays. For more information on the topic, check out the Unreal documentation under Engine Features, Rendering and Graphics, High Dynamic Range Display Output. This workflow will work on both LDR and HDR displays. While Unreal still has support for lookup tables, the recommended workflow is to use the color correction settings instead, as these settings will better ensure the color balance looks the same on all displays. Finally, avoid using color grading as a way to fix texture, lighting, or exposure issues. Those issues should be solved first by adjusting the textures, materials, lights, and exposure settings respectively. Before we get started with color correction, it's a good idea to disable eye adaptation or auto exposure settings. There are a couple of ways to do this. First of all, we can go into our project settings, and from here go to Engine, and then Rendering, and then scroll down to the default settings. From here we can disable auto exposure. Another option, if you've already got a post-process volume in your scene, we can select that post-process volume, and then open Exposure under Lens, and select Min and Max Brightness, and set both of these values to 1. When judging the color balance of your scene, it's a good practice to drop in some reference objects designed to assist us. The reference objects that are most often used in photography are a gray ball and chrome ball, as well as a color chart. Fortunately, Unreal comes with these helpers already built in. To get access to them, we need to go to our content browser and then open View Options. And in View Options, we want to make sure that Show Engine Content is checked. From here, we need to open up the Sources panel, and then we can search under Engine Content, Editor Meshes, and then Color Calibrator. The object we're looking for is SM underscore Color Calibrator. Go ahead and drag that into the scene. We'll focus in on that object and we'll position it in our scene so that we can make use of it. It's best to rotate the object so that the color chart is perpendicular to your main light source. The easiest way to do this is to select the main light source. In this case, it's going to be our directional or sunlight. Then I'm going to copy the rotation by right-clicking on Rotation, choosing Copy. Then I'll reselect the color calibrator, right click on rotation, and choose paste. Now we only need the Z rotation, so I'm going to change X and Y back to zero. Now in some cases, you won't want to zero out the X and Y rotations. You want to keep them exactly as they are. It really depends upon where your source light is in the scene. The idea is that you want to make sure the light is hitting the front face of the color chart exactly perpendicular so that there's no shading effect across the surface. You want it to be full bright. In this case, I think we're okay. All right, let's look at the color grading workflow now. There are two sets of tools we'll be using, and both are found on the post-process volume. When color grading, the first step is to adjust the project's tone mapper or contrast. Unreal's Film Tone Mapper uses the ACES, or Academy Color Encoding System. This system is an industry standard for film and TV. It's the closest approximation of the entire color gamut available to the human eye. And what it essentially does is it maps the HDR content from Unreal onto low dynamic range displays. When adjusting the filmic tone mapper, you want to adjust it for a project-wide look. The settings we have available to us are slope, toe, shoulder, black clip, and white clip. These settings are used to control an S-curve. Slope controls the overall shape of the S-curve. Keep in mind that lower values here will make the contrast very dull. Toe controls the bottom of the S-curve, or where the darks and blacks are. The best way to adjust the toe is to find a dark spot in your scene 
and then adjust it there. Adjusting the toe can help to lighten areas that are too dark. Shoulder is used to control the top of the S-curve, and the best way to adjust the shoulder is to find a bright spot in your scene and tweak it from there. It's generally best to leave black clip at a value of zero, and then white clip will allow you to choose where the whites begin to clip out. You can easily disable the Filmic Tone Mapper by simply bringing up the console with the tilde key and then typing r.tonemapperfilm and then zero to disable it. If you need to re-enable it, simply type it back in again and type one instead of zero. Keep in mind that this does not completely disable all tone mapping. What it does is it disables the Filmic Tone Mapper and then falls back to the default Unreal Tone Mapping system. Remember, it's a best practice to settle on a film curve on a project-wide basis. Changes to the film curve can have dramatic effects on color grading. Working this way helps ensure consistency, much like the film world where a single film stock is used for the entire project. After we've adjusted the project's tone mapper, we're ready to begin tweaking the actual color balance using the post-process volume's color grading settings. These settings can be used on a shot-by-shot -shot basis from camera to camera or scene to scene. The first thing we'll want to do is to adjust the white balance. Under white balance, we'll find temp. This is the temperature. It's defaulted to a value of 6500 Kelvin. Generally, the way you work with white balance, much like photography, is to find the spot that is actually white, such as here on our color chart. While looking at that white spot, you can then adjust the temperature until it looks right. Obviously, lower values will make the scene look cooler, while higher values will make it look warmer. The look you're going for will determine the final temperature that you choose, but a typical sunny day is at a temperature of about 5500 degrees Kelvin. After we've set our white balance, we have global, shadows, midtones, and highlights. It's best to start with global and do as much as you can. And once you've finished changing the global settings, if you need to continue to color correct, then move down to shadows, midtones, and highlights. Under global, you're going to find the primary controls. These are going to be saturation, contrast, gamma, gain, and offset. Saturation is obviously for color purity. Contrast, again, is for tonal mapping. Gamma controls midtones, gain controls highlights, and offset controls shadows. Starting with saturation, this allows us to control color purity. And you'll see that we have a color wheel as well as a slider underneath that color wheel that controls intensity. And to the right of that, we have R, G, B, and Y sliders. We can also switch to hue, saturation, value mode. We can use the intensity slider here to very quickly change our scene to black and white. Opening up contrast, we can see we have a color wheel again, but unlike the saturation color wheel, this wheel has a complementary effect to the scene. So if I were to pull the color over to a warm orangish color, we can see what's happening is that the highlights of the scene are orange, while the shadow and dark areas are light blue. And again, we can control the contrast intensity with the slider. Remember that gamma controls the midtones, and you'll find that if you'd like to tint the entire view to a certain shade, this is the best place to do it. Gain allows us to control the highlights. Keep in mind that all of these settings have some overlap. For instance, gain will not only affect the highlights, but you'll see as I drag this gain towards blue, it's also affecting the shadows. We can help to alleviate some of that overlap when adjusting the gain. To do that, we'll go back up to gamma, and we'll make sure to drag the color wheel to the opposite side of the wheel, or the complementary color. As you can see, I'm on the opposite side of the wheel from gain, and now my shadows have less of a blue cast to them. And finally, with offset, we can control our shadows. Now, if after you've adjusted all of the global settings, you're still not quite happy with the look, and you need to adjust something specific, say the shadows, you can scroll down a little further, and you'll have your shadows, midtones, and highlights rollouts. So for instance, if I wanted to tweak my midtones further, I'd open midtones, and then perhaps open gamma, and maybe we'll give this a slightly blue cast and adjust the intensity. Of course, color correction and color grading are a subjective art, and Unreal's color grading tools are going to allow you to do both color correction and special effects quite easily once you understand how they work. If you'd like more information on color grading, check out the Unreal documentation at the link on screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next Unreal Tips and Tricks.